What's going on everybody? Jeep Banerjee back here and in this video I'm going to share with you guys my drop shipping tips for what's going to convert and how to create a store that really has high conversion rates. Um, so before I jump in and uh, talk about that topic, I want to first and foremost thank you guys for obviously watching this video. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying my content and that I should continue giving away free value. And please turn on notifications so that way anytime I drop a video, which I'm trying to do every single day, you guys will get notified that it's up and running and you guys can be the first to watch it. So thank you so much for all the support and love. I really appreciate it and keep uh, keep keep egging me on because I want to keep creating great content for you guys. So going into the topic of today, which is where I'm going to talk about how to create a store that really converts well, I'm going to give you my quick tips. I want to share with you guys though why I have a good background and knowledge on this because this doesn't just come from guesswork or anything like that, okay? I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars A-B testing and really split testing different call to actions, different colorways, different layouts, different themes, and different ways to utilize the fold to get the best results. And I've done that for my own stores. I've helped a bunch of students out with their stores or even just random people sometimes who've messaged me because oftentimes people will send me their store and I'll find the same common mistakes throughout and once we make those changes, stores will have an increase in conversion rate. Some stores even that were never selling any product start selling product. So really there's a few things and a few tips that I have that I think will make a big, big difference in helping your guys' stores uh, convert at a much higher rate and you guys will be able to optimize much better. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is conversion rate, okay? So what conversion rate essentially means is what percentage of people are coming to your store and what percentage of those people that come to your store end up purchasing, okay? So conversion rate is a simple mathematical formula, it's a percentage, okay? It's essentially um, the people that are coming to your store and the people that are purchasing, it's that ratio, okay? So just to give you guys an example, and I'm gonna use very um, basic numbers, because obviously your conversion rate usually is gonna be like 1.973% or 1.82%, but just to keep numbers straight and simple, for my example, I'm gonna use an example of a 2% conversion rate, okay? So what that means at its core is that every time 100 people come to your website, two people end up purchasing or making a purchase on your website. Obviously, it's not a tie, true and tested method where every time you get 100 visitors, two people are going to buy. It just means over the entire big picture. So if, if you have tens of thousands of visitors come in, typically every 100 of those people that would come in, you'd see two converting into a customer. Obviously, there are going to be days where you have higher conversion rates, lower conversion rates. There might be a day where 100 people come in and six people buy, and then the next time 100 people come in, zero people buy. But overall, that's what conversion rate means. And the most important thing you're wondering is why does conversion rate matter? Well, it's very simple. If you can convert more traffic into paying customers, you will make more money. That's as simple as it comes down to. So let's go ahead and look at the outlook of conversion rate and how big of a difference it can really make because a lot of people overlook this, right? Everyone constantly wants to worry about their ad spend, ad spend, ad spend, and how they can better fine tune Facebook ads. And very few people actually lock in and figure out better ways to improve their conversion rate. So I'm gonna show you guys a simple, simple example here, okay? So let's say for example, you guys spend $1,000 a day on advertising and you have a 2% conversion rate, okay? And so what that basically means is that, you know, out of all the traffic you're generating with that $1,000, 2% of that is converting. And let's just say hypothetically that makes you an average of $1,500 daily in revenue, okay? So you're spending $1,000 daily on advertising and you're getting about $1,500 back in revenue. For most people, that's probably not gonna be a sustainable business model and that's not gonna be very profitable. But whatever the case may be, um, that's what your that's what your situation looks like okay now if your ad campaigns are fully optimized you're going to feel upset with the return on ad spend or roas of you know where you're spending a thousand dollars a day and you're only getting 1500 back in revenue right that's frustrating right and if you're doing everything on the ad side there's not much else you're thinking you can do however if you're able to find a way to double your conversion rate so literally taking your conversion rate from two percent to four percent by optimizing your website better you can also double your revenue. So check this example out, guys. So let's say you were able to find, <coughs> <coughs> let's just say you were able to find all the reasons why your website wasn't converting well, and you find a way to double that conversion rate. This is exactly what you guys would do, okay? So if your conversion rate went from 2% to 4%, which is a double, and you still spent that $1,000 a day on advertising, instead of making 1500 in revenue where you have a 1.5 return on ad spend, you would now make $3,000 a day in revenue and you would have a three return on ad spend. 
check out how crazy that is. And all you would need to do is create better optimizations where instead of every two out of 100 people buying, every four out of 100 people are buying. And these are some of the biggest things that many drop shippers um, drop the ball on, frankly, right? Especially new ones. They're constantly working and blaming their product and they're blaming their ads, et cetera. And they never think about the basic concept of conversion rate. If you can increase your conversion rate even slightly, it makes a big difference, right? Even if you're able to get it from every two people buying to every three people buying, where it's like a 1% increase in conversion rate, you would now have a two return on ad spend instead of a 1.5 and I guarantee that would help you become more profitable. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk about really what are my biggest tips and what are the biggest flaws I see most uh, stores uh, missing out on which are killing your conversions and if you make these simple changes or if you don't have these simple changes already taking place you guys will start to see a dramatic increase within your conversion rate almost overnight because these strategies work as long as you do them right. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is going to be the product page, right? So I want to share with you guys my tips for the product page, okay? So first things first, I'm going to show you guys an example of all the things that I'm talking about, but I want to break them down first so you guys can understand it. So you have to have an add to cart button before the fold. What is the fold you're asking? So the fold is essentially the part of the page when, especially when I click on a new link or I go to a new website, everything that I see on the screen without ever having to scroll is called before the fold or above the fold. As soon as I have to scroll, now I'm going down the fold, okay? So you always wanna make sure that your add to cart button is visible as soon as you visit a page, as soon as you visit your product page. If I have to scroll to see it, you're already killing your conversions, okay? It's just mathematically proven that that's gonna kill your conversions. The second thing is that you need to have an add to cart button that stands out. My rule of thumb is on any page of your website, there's one action that you want the user to take. On a product page, you want them to add to cart. On a home page, you probably want them to click shop now or browse your catalog, okay? So whatever it is, you need to make sure that that button really, really stands out. For me, I love using green and um, it just, because green has that sim symbolic method of go and that just prompts and promotes people, at least from my psychological, studies and understanding that people are more likely to click something that's green than something that's maybe red, right? Because red is like, oh, stop. So you have to just make sure though, you don't need to use green. You just need to make sure though, it's some sort of color that stands out on your website. The biggest mistake I see so many dropshippers make is sometimes they will use a white button on a white background for their add to cart button. Nobody ever is gonna notice that. I'm gonna show you guys a live example of how to really, like I like to say, use the ugliest color for your add to cart buttons because they work. And then the last tip that I have for you guys for your product page is you need to have fast load times. You can use a website called gtmetrics.com to check your page speed, but if you don't have a fast load time, you're going to have a lot of drop-offs, okay? So all the people that are clicking your ad from Facebook or from whatever you're marketing from, if your website takes a long time to load, people are very impatient in today's day and age. They're not going to stay around, they're just gonna click away and they're gonna be upset. So you need to make sure you have that fast page time so you can drive the most or the largest portion of traffic to your website. So let's go ahead and look at a live example, okay? So I wanna to talk to you guys about the example here of uh, Lisa Mattress, okay? So they're doing the three things that I mentioned really, really well. They have a very fast loading website, even though they have a lot going on, they, they nailed down the optimizations for their speed. As you can see, the add to cart button is before the fold, right? So this is at their product page. I clicked right on the product page and I can see the add to cart button front and center. And then let me tell you guys the third thing that I mentioned, right? So the add to cart button's above the fold, fast page load time, and number three, their add to cart button is hideous and ugly. But I guarantee you when you first looked at that website, what was the first thing you saw? You saw that orange hideous add to cart button because that's what they want you to do and they want all your attention focused there. And that is exactly what I'm talking about for product page optimization. It will help you guys make a big difference. Lisa Mattress is a big company. They've probably spent tens of thousands of dollars on testing all this stuff. So this is a proven model that they know works well. Okay, let's go ahead and now talk about checkout page tips, okay? So for the checkout page, it's when someone adds, adds to cart. Again, like I said, your main focus at this point is you always want people to check out. So you need to have your checkout button before the fold again. You need to have a checkout button that stands out again. I love using green, like I told you guys. Um, and then you wanna also make sure that this page is not filled with distractions. I've seen people have their update cart button above their checkout button, or they'll put like random buttons like, oh, continue shopping now or return to, um, product page or whatever and they'll make it the same size and the same color button as their checkout button. You cannot do that. The checkout button needs to be the biggest and I particularly tell people only use a button for the checkout button and for update car and all those other little things. Just use underlined text like hyperlinks. That's it because that's going to work a lot better for conversions. 
and on this page you want to have no distractions because your goal is to get them to pay the only thing that i add on this page is i want to reassure my customers on this page to check out by letting them know basic things like shipping times, shipping costs, any guarantees you have, any of that good stuff. And I'm gonna show you the example from Lisa Mattress because again, they do a phenomenal job with this, okay? So as you can see, they have two checkout buttons, bright orange, again, your eyes just drop right to it. And the first checkout button they have is actually above everything, right? It's like the first thing you see before you even see the products that you're in, are in your cart, you see this checkout button, right? And best of all, under that checkout button, the first one, it says free shipping and returns on every order. So it's reassuring you as a customer that it's okay to buy this. Like everything's gonna be okay even if it doesn't work out for you. So it's super important that you guys use the checkout page to do two very valuable things. One, have a really prominent checkout button above the fold that's a bright color. And then number two, reassure your customers that it's okay to make this purchase, right? Because customers at this point are having objections in their head. Oh, maybe the, maybe the shipping is going to take too long. Maybe I'm going to have to pay for shipping. What if I don't like it? All these thoughts are going through their head. If you reassure those thoughts before they have them, your conversions will skyrocket, guys. From there, I like to look at the payment page, okay? So the payment page is when they have clicked the add to cart, then the uh, checkout button, and now they're on the page where they're going to pay, make their payment and put in their information. And it's essentially the final step for you guys to convert them into a customer. Okay. So first things first, you want to make sure that you put a high quality version of your logo front and center so that this gives them sense of security. And the customer knows that this is the same website that they were shopping on, that they're about to make payment on, on Shopify. It's super easy to do. You could just upload it in the checkout file. Uh, you guys can YouTube other videos or figure out how to do it. It's very, very simple. I don't want to take time talking about that. Um, the second big thing I recommend is taking as many payment methods as you can. Some people prefer to pay with Apple Pay. Some people prefer PayPal. Some people prefer credit card. The more payment options that you have, the higher your conversion rates will be. No one will ever be upset that you have too many payment options. So that's another way to really dramatically increase conversions. Number three, same thing. There's going to be a button that says continue to shipping method because first they have to fill out all their basic shipping address and all that stuff. And after that, you need to have, you need to get them to the second step of the payment screen, right? So again, you need to use a bright color. I love using green. Like I mentioned to you guys, works great for me. And the final thing you want to do with your payment page <clears throat> is you want to add a discount to your store and you can just do this, go to Shopify in your back end, click discounts and you can just make up any discount. And the reason you wanna do this is because if you don't do that, the discount box will not pop up on the right side. I'll show you guys in the example uh, after this, but it's very, very important that you guys do that. Okay, so here's a great example of what I'm talking about. So this is the payment page from Kylie Cosmetics. So as you can see, her logo and her branding is front and center on the top. She's got the discount box on the right. And she's got multiple payment options, especially with express checkout options, such as PayPal and Amazon Pay, stuff that you guys can do in just seconds with Shopify. And super clean, super simple, nothing crazy with the payment page, but these basic things go a long way. So last but not least, before I finish up this video, let me share with you guys some other final tips that can also have a good enough impact on uh, positively increasing your conversion rates. So here are also a few other things that you guys can do. You guys can A, use a fave icon that builds a lot of trust and it also makes sure that the user knows exactly which tab belongs to yours. You just upload a logo, I think it's like 36 by 36 pixels into the fave icon section in your Shopify theme. That helps a lot. I highly recommend creating an FAQ page where you can answer all potential objections or questions that people may have uh, with your product because a lot of times customers don't buy because they're not 100% sure. Um, I always recommend showcasing real reviews. People love to buy products that they know other people are buying. They want to see what other people's personalities and perspectives are. Um, you should definitely have a page where people can see shipping and return policies clearly. Just break it all down for them because that's a big concern with online shopping. Make sure you guys are also collecting emails for people who don't pay. Uh, to sell them later with email marketing and discount codes, et cetera. That's another great way to increase conversions is uh, you can tell people like, hey, I see that you're not ready to you know, make a purchase with us quite yet, but how about you give us uh, your email address and we stay in touch and basically getting them to sign up for like a welcome newsletter, something along those lines. And I also highly recommend creating a sense of urgency. So using techniques such as fear of missing out or FOMO or flash sales to get people to purchase immediately, right? So sometimes you can try things and these are things that you have to play around with to see if it works for your niche and your website and your audience. But you can do stuff like, oh, I only have X amount left in um, quantity, so you better hurry up because these are flying off the shelves or high sellout risk, stuff like that is fear of missing out. That really can sometimes prompt people to really make a fast, decisive purchase. And then you can also use like flash sales, like, oh, today only give them a pop-up, like today only get 10% off if you finish your purchase right now or within the next five minutes. And these are other ways to boost your conversion rates and to get people to almost impulse buy. 
that's it for this section guys <clears throat> thank you so much for watching this youtube video please make sure that you guys subscribe and if you guys don't know um in this video right here where i talk about drop shipping in india and how you can basically drop ship from anywhere in the world i have a giveaway where i'm giving away um an entire access to my um, entire academy which is a 997 dollar value it's a giveaway i'm going to do once i get to 1000 subscribers so make sure you watch that video and follow the directions on how to enter thanks so much guys